Second Chronicles 7.14 is known by many scholars to be a recipe for restoration. These are the words of God. God speaks this to Solomon as Solomon prays to God. And God gives him three things. Humble yourselves, pray, seek my face, and turn from your wicked ways. And God says, if you follow through with these three things, he promises restoration. And when I read this, when I read this verse, the first thing that popped into my head was Psalms 51. David's repentance towards God when he sins. And it's funny because these three things that God gave Solomon, God gave him after David's death. But yet when we, when we look at David's repentance, he follows through on each of them. First is, hum is, is humility. We see that David starts off his psalms in a humble way, in a humble spirit. See, humility is when we recognize our sin, is when we recognize our guilt and what we did. And David, in verse 3, he says, For I acknowledge my transgressions, and my sin is always before me. Against you, you only have I sinned, and done this evil in your sight, that you may be found just when you speak. David recognizes what he's done. He recognizes his fault. He recognizes that he sinned before God. See, he doesn't go out and blame the situation. He doesn't go and blame others. He recognizes that it's his fault. And it takes true humility to recognize that. Many times, you might relate to me, many times we tend to blame things or to blame others for our mistakes. Well, I sinned because this and that. Well, see, he bring me there, so that's why I sin. But in the end, it's our decision. It's what we do. And it takes true humility to recognize that. The second thing that that God gives us is God, God, God gave Solomon was to pray and seek my face. We know that we know that David, when he was confronted with his sin by Nathan, by Nathan the prophet, right away he doesn't just wait. Right away, he goes on his knees and starts seeking God. Many times when we fall into sin, and I know that I do this, and I know that many, many of us brothers and sisters, we can relate to this. We tend to run away from God. The last thing we do is seek God. We sin, and then when we sin, we fall away. We're ashamed of our sin. We're ashamed of what we've done, and then we run away from God. We stay away from his presence. But David, he does the total opposite. When he sees his sin and when he recognizes his sin, he turns to God and he cries out for mercy. He prays and he seeks his face. But what I would what I really want to focus on is his attitude in his prayer. And if you look in verse 15, he says, O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall show forth your praises. For you do not desire sacrifices, or I would give it. You do not delight in burnt offerings. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. These, O oh God, you do not despise. We see that David comes in this prayer with a broken heart, a broken spirit. David is mourning over his sin. He feels for his sin. He feels the pain. He knows that he, 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 he sinned against God and that his sin broke God's heart. And for this, he's, he's suffering. He mourns. In true repentance, when we repent, we mourn for our sin. We, a true repentance is, is when is when we feel sorry for what we did. Is when we when we're hurt. Many times, when repentance, I, I catch myself just praying like a regular prayer. God, I know I did that wrong. Forgive me. But there's never a true pain, a, a, a true burden, a, a mourning in my heart. David was mourning for his sin. When true repentance takes place, I believe that mourning takes place also. That we mourn for our sin and with a broken heart and broken spirit. I want to ask you guys tonight a question. Do we feel broken for our sin anymore? Do we have a broken heart for our sin? Do we mourn? Or do we just pray another prayer, God, please forgive me, and then move on with our lives? See, David mourned. He was close to God. He knew that when he hurt God, he also hurt him. I want to ask you, brothers and sisters, I want to ask you, youth, do you mourn for your sin anymore? 
Because if you don't mourn for your sin, that's a big question mark for me. If you don't mourn for your sin, then I, I think there's time for true repentance to take place once again in your life. The third thing I gotta give Solomon is turn from your wicked ways. You know that repentance is an action, it's a verb. It's not just something that we say, it's something that we do. Repentance, the definition, the, the definition of repentance, the biblical definition of repentance is a 180 turn from your old ways to your new ways. From, from sin to godliness. It's a turn. It's not just something that we say, God, please forgive me, I repent. It's something that we do. You see in, in, in verse 10, David's re, uh, approach to repentance, and I really want to focus on this, it's such a powerful point. It says, create in me a new heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast away your presence from me. Do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore me the joy of your salvation and uphold me by your generous spirit. You notice one thing. When David approaches repentance and he asks God for repentance and he asks, he asks God to do the changing inside of his heart. God, you created in me a new heart. God, you restore a steadfast spirit in me. You restore the joy of salvation to me. Many times when we repent, we try ourselves in our own strength to change our ways. We try ourselves in our own strength to turn from our wicked ways. And that's never a successful repentance. I don't believe that. I don't believe we could successfully, su successfully repent with our own strength and our own power. See, David, he goes to God and he calls for his help. God, you help me. God, you create a new heart in me because I know I can't do it myself. I don't have the power to. I can try, and many times I could try, but I fail because I don't have that strength. He calls for God's help. True repentance is when we call for God to intervene in our lives and when we ask God to come and change us. And I would like us to stand and just pray. And I want us to come in this prayer first with humility to recognize our sin, to recognize what we've done. And then when we come and we seek God, let's not seek God just like in any ordinary prayer. Let's seek God with a broken heart, a broken spirit, and mourn for what we've done. And third but not least, let us ask God to change our lives and for God to change us and turn us from our wicked ways because we cannot do it alone. Only He can. Let us all pray together.